The eleven Fatui Harbingers are among the most powerful people in the land of Tavat. They possess powerful delusions that allow them to wield elemental energy and have incredible strength. In this video, I'll go over the history of five of them as described in the Pale Flame Artifact Set. These Harbingers are Signora, Dottore, Pantalone, Scaramouche, and Piero. Also, if you like this video, consider subscribing. It helps me out a lot and I'd really appreciate it. Anyways, let's move right on and get into the video. Signora was one of the two Harbingers in this video that we've actually met in the story, being the first Harbinger that players encounter. She was the eighth of the Harbingers, and was assigned by the Tsaritsa to collect the Gnosis from the other Archons. She successfully obtained the Animo and Geonosis, but was killed by the Raiden Shogun before she could get the Electronosis. However, long before she was a Harbinger, she was known as the Crimson Witch of Flame, a powerful sorceress who was feared by many 500 years ago. So let's get into the lore of the Stainless Bloom and how she became a Harbinger. You astound me. You have but a human body, and yet you carry such a power within you. You claim that you have no tears left to cry, no blood left to shed. But surely this is because you have filled yourself with fire. Though your body has long been covered in scars, fierce flames are all that now flow, like molten iron from your eyes and your wounds. But we appear to have gotten off topic. The reason I followed the trail of smoke and tracked you down is that I wish to try to deal with you. Let the flames that now devour you be extinguished by the grace of Her Majesty. What say you? The first Fatus gave power to a young woman in whom the flame of life had all but died, and in her wild imagination, she saw the line that lay between the corrupt past and a stainless future. I understand. Then let glacial ice take the place of my erased past and extinguish these undying flames. Let the darkness of corruption, the pain of the world, and the humans, beasts, and the sin they carry all be purified by silent ice. But despite this, a pure white flame continued to burn within her heart. We share the same goal, you, your Saritsa, and I. Cleanse the sources of distortion in this world, short-sighted, ignorant gods in the darkness and corruption of the abyss. Good. I will do whatever it takes to become an effective instrument in the advancement of our common cause. For even if I dress in pure white from head to toe, the ashes of the dead that have long left their stain on every inch of my being can never be cleansed. So now, let me simplify this. At this point in time, the Crimson Witch had nearly used all of her life's flame to burn away the corruption of the world. Her death seemed inevitable, as the flames would soon burn away her heart. However, she was approached by Piero, the first of the Harpingers. He offered her a cryo delusion to shackle her true power and save her life, and in return she joined the Fatui, with her goal to cleanse the world of corruption. Though, the flame still resided within her, and one day, it caused her to lose her life at the hands of the Electro Archon. Dottore is the harbinger who we meet in the Genshin Impact manga. He has an interest in machines and loves to tinker with them, as supported by what Child says in the latter's first story quest. We haven't met Dottore in-game yet, but I think we may just see him soon. Next week, I'm planning on releasing a speculation video completely dedicated to him. Anyways, let's get into the lore of the Wise Doctor's Pinion and how he became a Harbinger. A human is nothing more than a machine of a certain level of complexity, thus declared the youth from his lectern in the seedbed of wisdom. If one were to disassemble a part of this machine and make enhancements to it, its performance could be greatly amplified. With or without a vision, and irrespective of their physique or combat skills, enhanced humans would surely display strength far beyond the average. Despite the risk of being denounced as a heretic and permanently cast from the circle of the wise, the youth candidly jotted down these thoughts in the margins of his research notes. As anticipated, no research breakthroughs are possible, given the working style of the academia. Nevertheless, being expelled would be a loss. One needs the environment conductive to research. Following a trail of rumors of heresy, the first of the Fatui tracked him down. Merely an enhanced human. If your great nation can furnish me with sufficient resources and allow ample time, I could manufacture even that which you would call a god. What say you? 
In the desert that shone bright like liquid gold, he inquired of the Snezhnayan diplomats, Will you treat me like the Academia did? Will you call me a monster, a madman? Or will you treat me as my hometown did, and chase me away with pitchforks and clubs? However, good, then we are now in partnership. As for the matter of your title, what do you say to this? Taken completely by surprise by the sheer irony of the title he was given, the young man burst into hysterical laughter. Let's simplify this now. When he was young, Dottori was chased out of his hometown because of his crazy experiments, and the Sumer Academia did not see him too kindly either. One day, his experiments caught the ear of Piero once again, who tracked him down and asked him to join the Fatui. He accepted, and was granted the ironic title of Doctor, which he found hysterical. His goal, it seems, is to simply create the strongest being he possibly can, something that could even rival the almighty power of a deity. Pantalone is a harbinger that has only been mentioned a few times in game. Andre in the Northland Bank, Goff in Mondstadt, and Londa at Wangshuin all make mentions of him. Not much is known about him outside these lines and this artifact set, so let's get into the lore of Moment of Cessation and how he became a harbinger. Money is the lifeblood of the world, and the pathways along which it flows are the world's arteries. Then, the center of the world is a heart made of gold. He was not one of the favored, and could only pursue worldly power. But though money ought to be nothing to the gods, they held it firmly within their grasp nonetheless, along with the countless other forms of power that they wielded. Perhaps he lusted for money because he had once been destitute, or perhaps that the fact that the gods had never looked upon him with favor ignited a burning desire for resistance inside him. The people of the land from which these coins hail revere contracts above all else. In the name of money, I shall respect the contract between us. We shall, by whatever means necessary, become the heart that pumps money around the world. And, when the moment comes, that heart shall cease beating by our will alone. Alright, now let's go ahead and simplify this. Pantalone used to be poor, and he was never granted a vision by the gods. It doesn't exactly explain why the Fatui tracked him down, but it does explain his goal. That goal is to take away something from the gods that specifically being the control over money, he simply wants to become the source of all money into VAT and then prevent anyone else from acquiring that wealth. Skaramouche is of course the other harbinger in this video who we have met in the game's story. He is the sixth of the Fatui harbingers. However, he has now taken the Electronosis after obtaining it from Yaimiko and abandoned the Fatui. When he was still in partnership with the Fatui, however, they unlocked his true potential, and it is explained why he joined the Fatui in the first place and became a harbinger in their surpassing cup lore. He was born with a face fairer than any other, destined to a long life and a hollow will. He was a transcendent being, divinely created, but he was cast aside like worthless dross. Yet, due to an error that cannot be known, he roused himself from slumber and began to wander the mortal realm. Before the Fatui found him, he had drifted for countless years, and in that time, this is what his experience had taught him. I am a human who surpasses all others. Even the gods daren't meddle in my fate. Neither mortal nor god nor fate itself is qualified to be my judge. I am free to choose how I wish to spend the remainder of my days. Since these mask-wearing people are so fun to be around, I think I'll become one of them. Simplifying this down, Scarimouche was a divine creation of Beelzebul, the current Electro Archon. He was a test for her puppet, and not wanting to throw him out, she let him wander the world. After wondering about his purpose for years on end, he eventually found the Fatui. The reason he joined, well, it is simply because he thought it would be fun. His goal, it seems, was to collect the Electronosis, and after doing so, he left them in the dust. Piero is the first of the Fatui Harbingers, and the last one that I will go over in this video. Along with the Tsaritsa, he founded the Fatui and personally recruited many Harbingers, including the ones mentioned in this video. Anyways, let's get into the lore of the Mocking Mask and how he became the very first Fatui Harbinger. Since the stain of my compatriot's blood cannot be cleansed, 
I shall become the jester who laughs in the face of fate. Since my level of learning could not compare with the sages, I failed to earn the favor of the previous ruler. So too did I fail to stop them from tearing away the veil of sin, ushering a tide of divine wrath, destruction, and foolishness. Then I shall become instead a fool, a fatus, and devote my telfs to her majesty, who understands my pain. My name is Piero, the jester. Please listen to the words I have to say. Proud Fatui comrades, I know your hearts harbor both the fires of rage and the cold of eternal winter. Each one of us has borne witness to the absurd callousness of the foundational principles of this world. So let us don our masks and mockery of the world as we go forth and rewrite the rules of destiny. Piero's goal is larger than that of any other harbingers mentioned in this video. He seeks to change the world in its entirety, rewriting fate itself. He claims here that he could have stopped the tragedy in Conria, but no one believed him. Devastated at the destruction that was caused, he went to the Tsaritsa, who shared his ideals. Thus he donned his mask and became the Jester, the first of the Fatui Harbingers. Anyways, that's it for this video. If you want to learn more about the Harbingers, I will gladly make more videos about them. Let me know down below. As I said, next week's video will be speculation on Dottery, so stay tuned. I hope you all have an amazing day, and I'll see you all in the next video.